Well, it's a pleasure to be back with uh, OIS companies to watch. Um, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about what's going on and in focus a little bit in the past and what our future looks like now. Um, I think one of the big pieces of news here is that, that we're a Santan company now. We were acquired a couple of months ago in the second half of August, and the beautiful thing for doctors and patients uh, because of that is there's a guarantee that we now have the financial ability to not only complete our clinical trials in the United States and outside of the United States, but get to market, you know, to get launched. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing for Santan to be able to acquire great technology like this. And it was a great thing for our shareholders, and it's going to be a great thing for patients and doctors uh, because of that. Now, our mission is, is an interesting one, and it's unique. And it's something that, uh, that when you look at the rest of the field, you'll see the uniqueness in this. And what that is is we're going to be the first FDA-approved, uh, minimally invasive, standalone procedure for treating glaucoma. Um, as you know, most of, the, most of the other technologies out there require a cataract removal. We can, but we don't require it. Um, in addition to that, we're the only company out there that's treating mild, moderate, and severe stage open angle glaucoma. So we've, we will have patients entered into our study that cover the entire waterfront, um, which gives the doctor a lot of flexibility in terms of how to, how to utilize this technology. And importantly, we get our patients to below 15 millimeters of mercury. And why is that important? Because the Aegis study taught us that for a glaucomatous patient, if you can get them below 15 millimeters of mercury, then you can halt the progression toward blindness. And of course, that's, that's everybody's goal. And while doing all of that, we're getting the vast majority of our patients completely off of their medication. So um, really, really an amazing technology. I'm honored to be a, a part of it. Um, some of the unique aspects of this in addition is we address the largest patient population. I'll show you a slide a little bit that will pay that off because it's a little counterintuitive for, for some people, but uh, uh, being the first and only device to provide treatment for mild, moderate, and severe stage glaucoma kind of makes sense that we've got a very large market that, that we can uh, uh, target this uh, procedure to. Um, again, clinical outcomes meet the age of study goal of below 15 millimeters of mercury and there's no requirement to remove the cataract, but if you want to, you can, and, and we've got data proving that our, that our device works just as well with cataract removal as it does without. Um, we're the only device right now, and there's a lot of stuff going on in glaucoma, but we're the only device that is going through a randomized trial against trabeculectomy, and that's the gold standard. I mean, that's what doctor, you know, when a doctor has a patient with moderate or severe stage glaucoma, and they're out of tricks. The drops aren't working, they don't want to do a laser, or the laser is already, uh, the effect is already worn off. Where do they go? They have to go to a trabeculectomy. So, um, so we're the only ones that have taken on the trab in a randomized trial. So our, our data are gonna be very interesting, I believe, coming out of this. Um, we'll obviously end up with some comparative labeling against trabeculectomy, we'll be the only ones. You know, a lot of people get up and say, well, we're safer than trabeculectomy. We're as effect effective as trabeculectomy. But they haven't done any studies to, to show that. So we're the only ones that will walk away in the next couple of years with, with that data set. And we believe this study design also um, is going to be appealing uh, to the European government. So when we look for reimbursement on a pan-European scale, this study is going to meet the, um, a lot of the things that they're looking for. Our material is unique. I'm going to talk about that in, in the next slide, uh, uh, but it's an, it's an incredible material. It's got a very long history, um, and of course, we've got some strong IP protection around that. So the company was founded based upon this brilliant material that our founder had invented. Um, it's called SIBS. That's a styrene block isobutylene block styrene, and this copolymer has been used as a coating for the tax stent and it's been in the body for 15 years. So that's a pretty harsh environment relative to the ocular environment where our device sits now. Um, and the fact that, that we've, we've had 15 years of experience with this in the body is, is remarkable, and it, it teaches us that as we look at how, what the longevity of this material will be, um, we believe it'll outlast the patient. It doesn't degrade. Um, it doesn't become brittle. It doesn't create inflammation. You know, Paul Palmberg likes to say that the eye doesn't even know this material's in there. So 
very unique aspects um, of this and, and you know, I think it's gonna be a huge benefit for us in the future. Now when you think about what, what are the benefits for the surgeon, because you know, these, you know, the patient benefits are obvious, getting their, getting their pressure lowered and, and stopping their progression toward blindness. But what, what's in it for the doctor, because that matters. If it's, if it's not a good thing for the doctor, they won't, they won't implement it. Well, they finally will have an option for this end stage patient that would have normally gotten a trabeculectomy or tube shunts which are fraught with um, long term complications and, and they're difficult procedures, long procedures. Um, so now they're, they, they'll, have a, uh, they'll have an alternative. And I think that over the course of time, you know, during my career, there have been numerous times when the standard of care got eliminated. I mean, we've all seen it. We saw cataract surgery go from intracap to extracap to FACO, and in, in each stage, the shift was wholesale. I believe the same thing will, will uh, pertain to, to this. Um, the, uh, the advantage in post-op uh, results compared to trabeculectomy are gonna be a, a real benefit to the surgeon. The surgeon, when they do a TRAB, they don't know what they're gonna see on, on post-op day one. The pressure might be too low and, and put that patient in a hypotenuse condition. The pressure might be higher than what they want and then the surgeon goes back and monkeys around with the sutures that they place to try to correct or change the flow coming out of the eye from the trabeculectomy procedure. What you get on day one with us is, is pretty consistent. The uh, standard deviation in our results are, are, are much, much tighter than what you'll see with a trabeculectomy. So I think we'll, we'll another benefit for the doctor will be that, that for some patients where they were contemplating a laser procedure, just to kind of buy themselves some time, knowing that that effect is gonna be temporary, I think will be a replacement for that. Obviously, the patients who are on five eye drops, four eye drops, three eye drops, you know, the, the, those, those conjunctivas are not becoming healthier with all that uh, eye drop usage and ocular surface disease has been on the uprise as people stay on these glaucoma drops for longer and longer. So we'll be able to be an alternative to keeping that patient on drops, on too many drops for too long. Um, and then of course, uh, uh, the reimbursement level for this procedure we think is, is gonna be substantial enough that it'll be worth the doctor's time, it'll be worth the ASC's time, it'll be worth the hospital's time, and the healthcare system is gonna save money by getting these patients off of eye drops and not having to worry about paying for the complications and side effects associated with the trabeculectomy procedure. So in the FDA clinical trial and outside of the United States, we've now given access to our technology to about 50 doctors. So what are they saying? What they're saying is the return to baseline vision, and I'm gonna show you some data on that uh, on, in a minute, is huge. I said, you know, with a trabeculectomy, we oftentimes never do the patient's second eye because they're not happy with, with what happened with the first eye. The post-op recovery is so difficult. So our ability to get the patient back to baseline vision is amazing. Um, and the doctors are telling us patients are asking for the second eye to be done within the first week. That's unheard of in the trabeculectomy world. They're also telling us that outside of the United States where we've got other trials going on, they're utilizing our technology for closed angle, pseudo-exfoliation, some pediatric cases, NTG, and while it's too early for us to have a signal on how well we're gonna do in all those areas, I find it really interesting that the doctors, based on their current experience, believe that we might be a solution for some of these. So it's a great opportunity for future clinical trials. And then, of course, um, the, the comments we always get back is that we've got better long-term data, more long-term data. Um, this next chart I'll show you will, will show what, what we look like out to five years, and we get a lower IOP at one year than what you're getting with the, with the other technologies. And it's, it doesn't exercise the doctor too much to do the procedure. You know, trabeculectomies, that, that's heavy lifting. Our procedure is, is uh, much more intuitive um, and much more teachable than the trabeculectomy. Now, what this chart shows, I, I can't show you data from the FDA clinical trial because the data are masked, but what this chart will show is we've got uh, 300 patients entered into this data set, and as you can see, these patients have an average pre-op IOP of uh, almost 23 millimeters of mercury. 
and they're on full meds. So when think, <laughs> let that sink in for a minute. A lot of studies that you look at, the patients are washed out prior to, to um, you know, they're taken off of their medications prior to being entered into the clinical trial. If we took these patients off their meds, their pre-op IOP would be about 30 millimeters of mercury. So these are patients that are, that are having a tough go. And as you can see, we get those patients to below 15 millimeters of mercury, and it stays there, and it's all the way out to the five-year time frame. And the vast majority of the patients are completely off of their eye drops. So <laughs> big savings for the patient, big savings for the healthcare system to be able to produce a result like this. This is a stratification of, the, of um, some of the data represented on the previous chart. And what we wanted to show is, you know, people would sometimes ask us, well, if I have a patient with a really high IOP, like an average of 30, or if I have a patient with really with manageable IOP, 20, can you still get both of those groups to below 15 millimeters of mercury? What this shows is we sure can. And so, you know, one, the, uh, the blue line is represented by a patient population that has an average IOP of 30. We get them below 15 millimeters of mercury. And the red line is a representation of patients that have an average IOP of, of about 20. We get them to below 15 millimeters of mercury. So really amazing versatility um, and, a, and, and a proof that bring them on. Mild, moderate, severe, high, low, you know, we, we can handle it. This next chart, it, when, when I saw these data um, get produced as a former cataract and refractive guy, um, this was really exciting to me because anybody who's been in ophthalmology um, for as long as I have been knows that when you can return visual recovery to a patient quickly, that's a market mover. That changes everything. And that was the first comment that our, our doctors gave us. And what this chart shows is that blue line that goes across at that 100% mark, 100% represents what the patient's baseline vision was before the procedure. What the red bars indicate is those patients received our technology, they received the procedure with no cataract removal. So these are, these are real glaucoma patients. And as you can see, within a week, they're back to their baseline vision. Their life is back to normal. And you just don't see that in the trabeculectomy world. So a really, really wonderful result there. And then obviously the, the blue lines represent those patients who receive both a cataract removal as well as our micro shun. And obviously their, their vision ends up being better than it was pre-op, but that's mostly because of the effect of taking out the cataract. So incredible data here and it's, and it's, uh, it's been very exciting for us. So, if you, if you look at the marketplace in terms of a pie chart and you, you say that's the whole market and it's represented by primary open angle glaucoma um, and then you've got other types of glaucoma, the closed angle in the green and, um, uh, and then just kind of a market basket of other glaucomas in, in, the, in the bronze. And then that red group, that little red group, that's what's been getting all the attention over the last bunch of years because those are patients who have glaucoma, but they have a cataract and it needs to come out. So that's that little piece of the market and as I mentioned earlier, we can address that. What our clinical study addresses is what's in the blue. That big piece of blue there, those are people with primary open angle glaucoma that don't have a cataract. So that's our market opportunity and it, it's a monster. It's, it, you know, we believe it's clearly the largest market opportunity that's out there. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we're addressing mild, moderate, and severe stage. This is just kind of a, a representation of what those visual fields look like when you, look, when you have a patient with mild or moderate or severe uh, stage glaucoma. And um, so the, the question then gets asked, well, why, why is this doing so well? Well, it's a number of reasons. You know, you look at the picture of the micro shunt there, and obviously that design has a lot of math, mathematics in it. You know, the, the, it's very deliberate in terms of how long, which is an eight and a half millimeter micro shunt. The inner lumen is 70 microns, <laughs> that's really small. Um, and of course there's a fin there to keep it from moving once, once you've implanted it. So that design is producing great results, but that design without the material, we wouldn't be hitting, hitting the ball out of the park the way that we are. Our material is unbelievable. Um, and it's designed, our, our, all the mathematics that went into that tube shunt were designed 
to make sure that the patient did not have hypotony or an IOP of below five millimeters of mercury, which you know, can, can result in long-term site-threatening adverse events. So in, in, in um, uh, summary, we address the largest patient population. We have amazing clinical data that, that's come out of this. It's the only device that's undergoing a randomized trial in the world. It's the only device undergoing a randomized trial against trabeculectomy. And with our unique patented material, we think this is going to be a huge player for the coming decades. Thank you.